When you first hear the word psycho, most film lovers think of Marion Crane and the iconic shower scene that changed cinema forever. Or they think of Norman and that sly smile as he stares directly at camera. Or heck, maybe there's even that .001% of you that thinks of the buzz cut of old Vince Vaughn instead. And for that, I apologize. Because while the series may have started with Alfred Hitchcock's classic back in 1960, the franchise has gone on to produce some TV movies and a full-blown shot-for-shot remake. So we're here to get into it all and are here to tell you what the f*** you need to know about the Psycho franchise. We all go a little mad sometimes. Despite how massive the Psycho film and its famous shower scene ended up being, its road to the big screen wasn't easy. Paramount Pictures downright rejected the premise for the film. It wasn't until Alfred Hitchcock, having bought the rights to the novel for $9,500, stepped in that they finally agreed to finance the picture. But even then, there had to be sacrifices. Hitchcock gave up his $250,000 director's fee and instead asked for 60% of the film. This ended up resulting in Hitchcock getting over $15 million when all was said and done. Quite a step up. Joseph Stefano was hired to adapt the novel by Robert Block and ended up being fairly faithful. The biggest change that Stefano made was to the Norman Bates character, making him considerably more likable and sympathetic. But even still, this is a man who ends up murdering his mother and her lover and recreating her in his mind as a means to cope. The fact that he was able to make him even somewhat likable is pretty astounding. But also a massive tip of the hat to Anthony Perkins, who heightens the film with his performance. Hell, he heightens every film in the series because he's just that damn good. The franchise would not have been the same without him just as it wouldn't have been the same without Janet Lee as Marion Crane. Lee had made quite the name for herself in Orson Welles' Touch of Evil, but Psycho would be the film that she would be most remembered for. Everything about the narrative leads you to believe that Marion is the lead and that you're following her on her own journey. So to see her journey cut so short and so violently was an absolute stroke of genius. Even the house that Hitchcock used had such identity to it. Used from elements of other sets on the Universal backlot, the house was originally just the front and left side. No reason to build the rest, as it wasn't even seen. However, as the house became an attraction on the Universal Studios tram ride, the house was updated to have the other side wall in 1963, and finally the rear of the house was added in 1983. It's been moved multiple times and currently resides in the back lot. And I would be remiss to not mention the score by Bernard Herrmann. It fits in so well and has been used in countless movies since. The screeching of the strings during the shower scene is absolutely iconic. But now that we've gotten through some of the inner workings, what exactly is this franchise about? Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Hitchcock shocked the world in 1960 with Psycho. You saw Marion Crane stealing $40,000 from her boss. That'd be about $400,000 today. As she's on her paranoid getaway, she stops off at this roadside motel and meets the owner and operator, young Norman Bates. While all seems relatively normal, things go off the rails when Marion takes a shower. The shower scene is so iconic that it's replicated or straight up shown again in every sequel. Marion is murdered and Norman dumps her body in the swamp. After much investigating by both Marion's lover, her sister, and a private investigator, it turns out that Norman has a split personality and has recreated a very violent version of his mother as one of those personalities. Norman is thankfully locked away at the end of the film, but not before he took a few victims with him. Norman Bates and that iconic smile absolutely belong on every memorable characters list, let alone one for the film itself. 
Perkins is in most of these films, so this extends to those as well. Then Marion Crane helped to change cinema forever by being set up as the lead, only to be killed halfway through. Sam Loomis and Lila Crane have their moments, but it's really the private investigator Milton Arbogast and his interactions with Norman that really stand out. And despite only being a corpse, Mrs. Bates also leaves quite the impression. The way you handled that Toomey guy, what an asshole. I could have killed him and you were so cool. No, I don't uh, kill people anymore, remember? Then we had to wait until Hitchcock's death 20 years later until they finally move forward on sequels. 1983 brought us Psycho 2, which saw Norman Bates released from the mental institution, which we saw him placed in at the end of the original. Norman returns home to his motel and discovers a seedy element. This is where Norman goes spiraling down as he starts being manipulated by those who are hoping to drive him crazy. No one believes he's cured. All the meanwhile, he's getting phone calls from his mother. So maybe he's not. Mary, the waitress who's been shacking up with Norman, gets attacked by him in his mother persona, only for the cops to kill her just as she's about to strike the killing blow. They inaccurately pin the murders on Mary and her mother Lila, leaving Norman as an innocent man. This is when we get the crazy twist of this woman, Emma Poole, revealing herself to be Norma's sister and Norman's true mother. It turns out that she was the one murdering people, not Norman. And in a full circle moment, Norman kills his new mother and sets her up in the window. Norman is of course incredible, but it's Meg Tilly's Mary that really leaves a massive impression. She's just incredible from start to finish. Dennis Franz's Warren Toomey is also a pretty fun role, with Robert Loja even appearing as Dr. Bill Raymond. You made me do this! You're tainted blood in me! Don't laugh at me, mother. Don't laugh at me. Psycho 3 came to us in 1986 and took a more slasher approach with its narrative. The movie starts off with a nun trying to kill herself, only for her to accidentally kill another nun. But back at the Bates Motel, Norman is still operating it, with his new mother sitting up in the window. Dwayne Duke shows up and takes on the job of assistant manager. Norman starts to form a relationship with the young nun, which of course makes mother jealous. You can guess what happens now. There's also a reporter who's writing an article about serial killers being put back into society. We eventually find out that Norman's new mother was, in fact, just his aunt, and she was obsessed with Norman's father. Norman breaks free from mother by stabbing the corpse. Thankfully, he's then recommitted to an asylum. Jeff Fahey's Dwayne Duke is unhinged and feels like he could be the killer when he shows up. And Roberta Maxwell's Tracy works as a great foil for Norman. Bates Motel aired on television in 1987 and completely ignored the existence of Psycho 2 and 3. This would also see Kurt Paul take over the role of Norman Bates. In this version, Norman was never released from the asylum. Instead, he makes friends with a guy at the asylum called Alex West and leaves him the Bates Motel when he dies. The only thing to really look out for in this one is a young Jason Bateman. There's a strange plot by a bank manager to scare Alex away, but the movie is at its most insane when a ghost element is revealed at the motel. The film is an absolute mess and doesn't feel anything like the rest of the series. It's very much a TV movie. As far as memorable characters, Lori Petty appears as a teenage runaway, but everyone just kind of comes and goes without impact. Get that whore out of my house. She's not a whore, mother. I said get rid of her. Oh, do I have to do it myself? No, mother. I'll get rid of her. Kill her. I can't. No. No, I can't. All right, all right. Then I'll do it for you. In 1990, Anthony Perkins returned and we received Psycho 4, The Beginning. This saw Norman somehow released from a mental asylum yet again. This time, though, he marries his former psychologist, and we're treated to flashbacks of Norman's childhood. We finally get to see Norma Bates in the flesh, and how Norman killed her and her boyfriend. We also see that whenever Norman tries getting sexually physical with a woman, the mother persona comes out and she murders them. 
In present day, Norman gets his wife pregnant and tries to kill her out of fear of creating another monster. He burns down his old house and we finally get somewhat of an ending for Norman. Because you know, the serial killer deserves to be happy. <laughs> Olivia Hussey's Norma Bates is absolutely phenomenal and a true standout. Henry Thomas also does a fantastic job as a young Norman. My mother, I was afraid of she isn't quite herself to me. <laughs> Then in 1998, Gus Van Sant made the baffling decision to remake Hitchcock's classic film. Despite it being a near recreation of Psycho, everything about this just lacks any type of feeling or soul. While the framing and actions may be the same, it lacks any sort of life. The oversaturated colors clash and the recreated shots, while amazing in the 60s, really don't work with modern cameras and full color. Everyone would be better off watching Hitchcock's original classic. As far as memorable characters, I guess everyone needs to see just how weird Vince Vaughn's Norman Bates performance is. But check out a compilation video rather than sitting through the whole movie. And it is interesting to see all of the different movie stars showing up. Finally, there was a Bates Motel TV show on AMC that starred Freddie Highmore and Vera Farmiga, but that's a TV show, so we're not going to concern ourselves with that timeline. This is where things get interesting, as we figure out the films you absolutely must see, what you can skip, and what you can check out if you have the time. As far as essential, the original Psycho and Psycho 2 are a surprisingly great pairing. Sure, you can't get better than the original but Psycho 2 was a legacy sequel before they were cool. Then, if you've got the time, Psycho 3 and Psycho 4 are wonderful slashers that have unique identities all their own. Then you can absolutely skip Bates Motel and the Psycho remake, because no one needs that in their life. The Psycho series is easily the least seen of those that we've covered so far on this franchise chat. While many have seen the original, the sequels are often unfairly overlooked, which is really too bad because they each provide a fairly unique look at the Norman Bates character. Whether it's the classic version from the original, the more conflicted version of the second, or the entirely unhinged version from the third film, there's always something to love. We'll just ignore what happened in 98. No one needs to remember that time, because this should not be the final cinematic appearance of Norman Bates, especially when his first appearance was just so damn memorable. I'm not even gonna swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. 